After so many years of trials, failures, and experiments, one of the most realistic and the most pragmatic to follow yogurt making DIY recipes. First and foremost, boil using our kettle just a little bit of water, just to warm the entire enclosure to help maintain the temperature momentum range throughout at least 24 hours worth of, of fermentation window. So after that's done, then it's time for us to reconstitute the milk. Begin by mixing in 150 grams worth of full cream powder alongside that with 600 milliliters worth of water. So next is the optional additions on the usage of coagulation agents. So in this case here, this author actually prefers to use calcium chloride as a to help assist in the coagulation of proteins during the fermentation process. So this will require anywhere between four small calcium chloride flakes. However, keeping in mind that for those readers and or, and or individuals who are predisposed towards calcium metabolism disorders and or um, and or those who are prone or clinically diagnosed towards hypercalcemia may, may be wise to actually forego the need of calcium chloride flakes altogether just to remain on the safe side. Is it absolutely necessary, however, by this author's opinion, that will be a no. Once again, we will be discussing that later on in further detail in the questions and answers section later in this video. And then, after that, we are going to heat it in the microwave. Yes, that is correct. As simple as that. The goal here is to bring the temperature up on this reconstituted milk to no more than 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And once we've reached that target, then it's time for us to add in the starter, culture, starter yogurt culture. In this case, it could be either commercial plain Greek yogurt and or natural pot set yogurt. No flavoring, no additives, no thickeners, none of that stuff. None of that whatsoever. So after that's done, we still have to blend it again using our sports blender to blend it all together to, to ensure an even mixture throughout the, the, throughout the finished result. And after that, then it is time for us to get our pre-warm thermos that we pre-warm earlier with the boiling water. And obviously we have to tip the water out and then pour in the reconstituted milk and the yogurt starter into the thermos flask. And from there on, it is just a matter of tightly secure it, close it. In winters, we would need up to two layers of clothing, preferably one that is that has heat retention characteristics. So that would be either a wool coated jumper and or just multiple layers of t-shirts that should suffice either way. The goal here is to um, create a um, to create and or simulate a warm blanketed environment to make sure that the temperature range momentum remains more or less in the higher side throughout at least the 24 hour fermentation process and having said having done all that all we, all we have to do is to simply just wait and this will take at least 24 hours this must not be interrupted and it must not be open in any manner, shape or form. Let the fermentation do the majority of the work for at least 24 hours. And once again, this will differ also during, uh, as accordingly to the time of the seasons. In summers, usually 24 hours should be what this author considered as a considerably satisfactory result. For winters, however, realistically, it would be advisable to go for longer than 24 hours, usually no more than 36 hours. The reason for this is to allow and to make sure that the fermentation process, to make sure that it is as complete as possible without interruption whatsoever. After 24 hours or up to 36 hours in winter, then it is time for us to strain the finished yogurt. Use a cheesecloth, tie it around the saucepan, and simply strain it out, slowly and methodically. Now, this will take anywhere between 
30 minutes or even up to one hour. So after we've actually strained everything, then it is just a matter for us to then simply store it in the fridge. So for every 700 or 800 milliliters worth of volume amount of liquids amount, there is the reconstituted milk powders and the water and the starter yogurt culture that will yield us to no more than 460 grams worth of usable solid portions. So in this video shows two, two portions. One is that is the very first chunk of solid mass output since this author only have one cheese cloth to work with so hence this needs to be split into two um, straining sessions one which yields at around 310 to 315 grams worth of sol solid outputs whereas um, the next training session leaves us with somewhere around about 130 to no more than 140 grams of solid outputs so hence this falls in line with the um, a little less than half of the original starting volume matter that is around about 40 to 45 percent if we were to be most optimistic so this 40 to 45 percent yield ratio also applies to smaller flask if we have uh, if we have one available so in this case here, as pictured, this is using a 550 milliliters uh, vacuum flask, which is rated at, at eight hours worth of heat retention rating. And that leaves us with effectively no more than say around 200 grams to no more than 220 grams worth of solidified outputs. It is important for us to actually consider the very first overarching disclaimer. Yogurt making requires a lot of surveillance and a lot of practice over time. Going through these instructions alone may not suffice for one to earn the self-confidence that this may yet be foolproof for numerous amount of reasons that diversities and unforeseen variabilities may yet occur on the readers and or individual side of tinkering for them to unfortunately have to bear in mind of their own variables to think about throughout following any recipes. Both actually works well and uh, equally well in terms of producing the thickness that is somewhat satisfactory, more or less the same. It, it is generally more preferable for us to use full cream milk powder because of the fact that saturated fats tends to, by their inherent, inherent biochemistry as one would expect, remains helpful to, to maintain a solidified product in the, in the long run. And another thing that this author actually finds with skim milk powder is that the actual um, palatability and the flavor wise seems to be not so not so full bodied as one would actually um, usually um, relate to when it comes to yogurts in general so hence that's one thing to keep in mind can you use flavored yogurts as starter long story short this author would say no it is generally not recommended for a number of reasons number one is that strangely resulting um, product actually, believe it or not, will actually suffer and due to the fact that there may yet be additives and or thickeners and or the inherent flavoring from the um, from the flavored yogurt starter that will likely also seep and bleed into the final fermentation product in which that is clearly what we do not want. Next question, summers versus winters. Generally speaking, during summers, obviously, 
we may not need to use additional layers of clothing to simulate a blanketed environment. The summer heat in room temperature um, environment is more than sufficient for us to use and to utilize as a as a blanket environment in and of itself for at least 24 hours or more should one wish to a, a more a, a more tanginous and or a sharper result the choice is up to the reader now on winters however this may yet be a little bit more difficult we have to nevertheless maintain a warm blanket environment for as long as possible and we can do this in a number of ways number one use more clothing layers try to use up to three or even up to four clothing of layers if especially if uh, readers who are watching this who are also who tends to be away from from home for the majority of the day would be wise to maintain a blanketed environment to make sure that the temperature range is some is more or less kept within the warmer side of things for as long as possible and number two is that it is it might be good and although this is only applicable for those who are who stays at home is to briefly expose the um, the thermos flask and or the containers themselves into a brief heat source no more than say three or four minutes so what this author will actually recommend is to use uh, is to use those portable heaters and just simply expose don't don't actually open the uh, the flask containers but just expose simply expose the flask containers in front of the heater for no more than two or three minutes turn it off and then re-blanket it again with the clothing the jury however remains open for debate whether or not it is okay for us to go slightly higher however what this author would like to actually um, share his experience is that if it is it is slightly more um, okay if we are going to go slightly higher because if we are actually fermenting it fermenting our yogurts during the winter sessions the slightly higher temperatures actually may actually constitute a favorable outcome because it allows the uh, the warmer temperature to retain its momentum over time then if we were to undercook the entire mixture that is less than 100 degrees Fahrenheit in which by that time unfortunately the fermentation process may be compromised when it is too low is it actually necessary to use coagulation agents well unfortunately this will be quite subjective towards one's own individual taste as well as one's own individual metabolism of certain mineral uptakes especially in this case here obviously um, we are concerned about calcium the theory has it as such that calcium chloride helps to lower the pH throughout the fermentation process in which that helps to contribute to the solidification and uh, um, the curding process or what they call the coagulation process than if we were to not use calcium chloride at all. Calcium chloride flakes are usually often used in commercial cheese making factory to make sure that it to make sure that it adds its own saltiness flavor into it somewhat and also to once again to contribute to the overall solidity and the overall thickness that we often accustomed to in commercial Finnish um, yogurts and or cheese. However, is it truly necessary though if you were to use it for a successful product? Well, this author would say no. It's actually not necessary overall. It's not a deal breaker at all. At the end of the day, the actual yogurt itself will likely going to end up being runny anyway during our dessert making um, recipes and whatnot or in, in their intended destination in our way of consumption and this leads us to the next question how long should we strain the yogurts for generally speaking at least 30 minutes or up to an hour of straining time is is more or less enough and suffice to um, to ensure that the solids are pretty much separated away from the liquid way. However, keeping in mind that even if we've surpassed the one hour straining session, the yogurt itself may still appear runny. However, we still have to put it into the fridge. Don't forget. So hence, the refrigeration process should, technically speaking, also try to, try to help with the, um, with the firming up process later on. 
And so there we have it, just simple and pretentious yogurt making recipe tutorial. Also, in the next later videos, we'll be using other interesting mediums such as the saucepan method, liquid milk method, and as well as using commercially viable existing products. Enjoy these little moments of nutritional frugality, and remember as always, keep living it forward. Thank you for watching.